Hello everybody, my name is Pook and welcome back to another Rec Room tutorial. This is going to be a two-part tutorial and the link to the second part will be in the description below. Please note this is an advanced tutorial on how to record 360 degree footage in Rec Room and does require basic knowledge on video editing, the Rec Room streaming camera, and basic YouTube uploading. Today, like I said, I'm going to be explaining, in my own opinion, the best tips and tricks on how to use the 360 degree filming camera from within Rec Room. Now, I know this tutorial is focused within Rec Room, however, most of these tips will work in any game or application that has a 360 degree capture mode. Since this tutorial will be focusing on the streaming camera, this will not work for PS4 players, screen mode players, or Oculus Quest users. First, you're going to want to learn how to enable the 360 degree camera mode from within Rec Room. You're going to want to open your watch and head to settings. From settings, you're going to want to open the advanced tab and turn your streaming camera on. From there, you're going to head to the stream mixer. As I have stated in previous tutorials, it is best to always record at 90 frames per second. From there, you're going to want to click the small button in the field of view section that enables the 360 degree camera. It can be seen next to the words field of view as this button here. Enabling this will turn on the 360 degree mode. It should look warped and wrapped of a 360 degree view of your surroundings. I will explain more on how this section of the camera works in the second tutorial I have posted in the link below. For now, you can turn this off. Now, the next part of this tutorial will focus on NVIDIA control panel setting, and this part will only work for users who have an NVIDIA brand graphics card installed on their computer. For those of you who don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can skip this step, however, your final product will look a bit blurrier than those who do have an NVIDIA graphics card. I am now going to head over to my desktop to continue this tutorial. To start, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're going to want to right-click your desktop and open up the NVIDIA control panel. Give the control panel a moment, as sometimes it does take a few moments to load and open up. Once the NVIDIA control panel has opened, you're going to want to do a few things. First, you want to go on a go to manage 3D settings. From there, you're going to want to scroll down and find the option DSR or Dynamic Super Resolution. Clicking onto the settings area, it will give you a drop down menu of native resolution upscale options. For the time being, put a check mark next to the option that says four times native resolution and press OK. From there, you will want to apply those changes. Once that is done, you're going to want to go under the display section and click the change resolution section tab. From there, you're going to see an option for your main monitor to use dynamic super resolution. Click the four times option and press apply. For this demonstration, I will not be pressing apply, as this will affect the OBS recording that I'm currently making to make this tutorial. However, once you press apply, your monitor will upscale itself, which could take a few moments, and could have some black flickering. Do not worry, this is just NVIDIA processing upscaling your monitor. After you have applied your changes, you will need to accept the changes by pressing yes in the NVIDIA control panel. At this time, you can revert those changes and move on to the next step. The next step will be setting up Rec Room for your 360 degree filming outside of the game. You're going to want to find Rec Room where it is installed on Steam VR. Right click it and go to Properties. In the general section of Properties, you're going to want to set launch options. You're going to use the command dash screen dash width base followed by the new width and then screen dash height followed by the new height. 
can find these numbers in the NVIDIA control panel. It will be the two numbers next to your dynamic super resolution. The numbers I am using might be different than the numbers on your computer because your resolution might be a different size than my computer resolution. The next step is going to be resizing your OBS recording window for whatever recording software you use. You're going to want to open up Settings in OBS by clicking Settings in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. From Settings, I'm going to go to Video Output. Here, you can change your base resolution and output resolution that you are recording at. Since I'm currently recording, I can't change these values. However, you're going to want to click in each of these boxes and input those two numbers, the width and the height of your new resolution, and press Apply. This will rescale your OBS window to record at the proper resolution. After all of these steps are completed, and you have re-enabled your dynamic super resolution, you are ready to launch Rec Room and start recording your 360 degree video. The link in the description will take you to a video explaining tips and tricks on how to actually record in Rec Room using 360. The rest of this tutorial will focus on what to do once you have your 360 degree footage. Please note that once you have your recording all finished and are ready to go edit, you must render your recording in the same resolution, length and width, that you recorded your video at. If you do not do this, it will cause issues and cause your final product to be blurry. Once you have your final edited 360 degree video, you're going to want to get it ready to upload to YouTube. Now before you upload your video to YouTube, you're going to need to tell YouTube that this video is 360. And the way you do that is by injecting metadata into your finalized video file. To do this, you're going to want to download the Spatial Media Metadata Injector by Google, which can be found on GitHub, linked in the description of this video. When you click on the release link, you're going to scroll down until you find the link for the asset download for the 360 degree video metadata tool for Windows. If you are on Mac, Download the Mac zip file. Clicking this will download a zip file that contains an .exe file. You're going to want to extract that to your desktop. And that is all you need to do to download the metadata tool. Double click on the metadata tool to open it. Once you have the metadata injector open, you should see something that looks similar to this. You're going to want to click open, which will bring up a file dialog. You're going to want to navigate to wherever you saved your finalized 360 degree video and double click on it to open it in the injector. From there, you are going to want to check the box that says my video is spherical 360. You can also click that your video has spatial audio. However, this only works if you recorded the audio from your streaming camera from within Rec Room. Once these options are set, click Inject Metadata. A loading bar will appear, and it will create a copy of your video in the same location you saved it with the metadata injected. This is the file you are going to want to upload to YouTube. Once the file is uploaded to YouTube, it acts as any other YouTube video you would post. After you have everything uploaded to YouTube, everything should look nice and clean, and after about an hour, YouTube should have rendered your full 360 degree video. Make sure to check the link in the description for a 360 degree video explaining the tips and tricks on how to set your scenes up in 360 degrees and use all of your space. Thank you for checking out the first part of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next video. My name is Pooks. Bye!